Praise God, everybody. And welcome back to another time of study right here from the beautiful sanctuary of Washington Hill Baptist Church. Amen. Where we study God's word to see what the word of God has to say to us. Again, we are asking each and every one to continue to lift up each and every one up in prayer, especially those of the Ray family that's out there. We know that God can do all things will fail, but we ask that you continue to connect with us as we uh, lift them up in prayer. Let's do that right now. Father, we come in the mighty name of Jesus, and we're thanking you, God, for this beautiful day that you have made. Not only do we lift it up, Lord God, our sick and shut in, but Lord God, we are lifting up the family member, many family members around the world who's going through their season. And Father, we just thank you for, for, for waking us up this morning and letting us down late last night. Again, Master, we ask that you will come tonight, be a part of this uh, teaching tonight. Give your, give your uh, servant clarity tonight, the teacher words of those who are viewing us from Facebook and YouTube will have a complete understanding. We love you and we thank you for us in Jesus' name tonight again we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, my brothers and sisters, thank you for tuning in. We've been studying a series of study concerning living, which is most important because once we have given our life over to Jesus Christ, we have to live the life of a Christian believer. We have to, we have to live this way so that Men and women, boys and girls, can see the light of Father of God shining through us. Now, some of the some of the uh, lesson that we've been teaching on, we talked about living a Christ-centered life. We talked about uh, we taught on the the blessed life, and last week we talked about living a spirit-filled life. And tonight we're going to go just a little bit deeper. Tonight we're going to talk about living a life of faith and not of fear. Amen. And we're going to look at an event that happened, amen, when Jesus and his disciples crossed over uh, to the other side. Amen. And we're going to use that study, that event, amen, to teach us about living a life of faith and not of fear. Amen. And we're going to be coming out of the book of Mark, uh, chapter, chapter 4, verse 35 to 41. And the strange thing, one of, one of the group texts that I received this morning <coughs> Amen. It was a message from Mark chapter 4 and verses 35 to 41. Uh, in Mark chapter 4, verses 35, amen, down to verses 41, you'll find these words. And the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over to the other side. And when they had sent away the mother to, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm, and wind, and waves beat up on the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awakened him, and said to him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose, and rebuked the wind, and said unto them, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Again, we're talking about living a life of faith and not by fear. Fear, my brothers and sisters, cannot exist right. with faith. Right. Amen. They cannot exist together. You see, as Christian, amen, our Christian faith is an assurance that we have from God. And we know that he loves us and we know that, that he cares for us. We know he cares about every need that we have. Amen. So what, when we have fear, it, it rules out our faith. Now fear, as many of you may know, amen, it is an emotion. And it's a part of our human makeup. There's a lot of things that makes us afraid. There's a lot of times we do be fearful of things. Even when we laugh and cry, Satan has a way of using our fear as an emotion, amen, to hinder a great number of believers right. from accomplishing the level of faith necessary, amen, to bring financial breakthrough, even physical 
breakthrough in their life. Yeah. All because they are fearful by taking another step. We live by faith and not by and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. Uh -huh. Amen. Also, Bible says in Romans, the just shall live by faith and, and, and not by sight. So we are, as Christians, we must live by faith and not by fear. Now, at the end of these verses that we're going to study tonight, Jesus is going to ask his disciples two questions. Why are you so fearful? And how is it that you have no faith? And, 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 and believe me, these two questions are very important questions. Amen. Because these men have been traveling with Jesus. Amen. They have seen Jesus perform miracles. And instead of them putting into practice what they have seen Jesus do, amen, they are fearful. And, and they, their faith has somehow disappeared. And Jesus is going to mildly rebuke them for not having enough faith. Amen. And it's even true with you and I. Amen. We go through uh, the, some, some things in our life that cause us to, to have uh, uh, less faith. Amen. When our normal lifestyle is interrupted by sudden drastic changes in our life, amen, it makes us fearful. We, we don't know what the next moment or the next minute is going to bring. Amen. Unexpected sickness can cause us to be fearful. Amen. When relationship breaks up unexpectedly, it can cause one to be fearful. Unexpected job losses can cause one to be fearful because they don't know where their next meal is going to come. They don't know where the resources are going to come from. But we have a God who cares about us. Amen. The Bible said, look towards the hill which come in our help and know that our help come from the Lord. There's a lot of unexpected situation that will occur against the children of God. And it's going to occur all the time. Amen. I can't st stand behind this sacred desk and say unexpected occasions not going to happen in your life. It will happen. Amen. You can receive a phone call if someone that you have, 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 have been with just a, a yesterday and receive a call that person that passed away. Amen. All the time, uh, unexpected things are going to happen in your life. And, and sometimes we ask the question, why me? And, but let me help you. Why not you? Amen. Because sometimes you got to understand it's not your fault. Amen. Because there are there are always a never ending war against the children of God. Amen. The, the Satan is always going to be attacking you. He got imps assigned to you. Amen. To always try to discourage you. Amen. From doing the work of God. But what is your fault, my brother and sister, when you don't live by faith? Amen. And you and you you don't live by faith and you don't face your fears with faith. Amen. This is what you have to do. And this is what the lesson tonight want to bring us to. Amen. That we continue to live by faith and, and not by fear. Now the reason why Jesus and his disciples was facing a, such a terrible fire storm is because Satan didn't want Jesus to carry the message of the kingdom of God to the Gentile nations. Amen. Ultimately, uh, the, the enemy wanted to destroy, amen, the, the works of Christ, amen, because the demonic forces always appear when you're doing the will of the Father. And I think the Bible says that every time we try to do good, evil is always present. So the enemy is always going to show his ugly head, amen. Satan sends sudden storms in our life to threaten us, amen, to prevent us from carrying out the message of Jesus Christ. Amen. He always comes in and you just recently married. He brings in things to bring a wedge between you and your wife or you and your husband. He's always trying to disrupt the peace that you have. Amen. With one another and always with God. Now, now let's look at the story for a moment. Because the story... That this event that happened, amen, is, is, is one that you have to look very closely. I preached it before, but I want to look at it very carefully today. The story is surrounding uh, this occasion where the storm occurred suddenly with the disciples. When Jesus had been teaching 
all day from the time he rose that morning to the evening concerning the kingdom of heaven. Amen. He was preaching and teaching. And therefore, in verse 35, Jesus tells his disciples, let us pass over to the other side. Now watch this. The other side is where Jesus desires to go. The other side is where the man who was possessed with the demonic spirit was on the other side. It is where the population of the Gentiles were located over on the other side. And Jesus wanted to go to the other side. Jesus' mission, amen, and his ministry was to seek and to save them that was lost. And so his mission were to go to the other side. Also, the lost was on the other side. And Jesus tells his disciples, let us pass over to the other side. Now watch this. In verse 36, they had, he sent away, amen, the multitude. And he told, and told him even as he was. They took him even as he was, amen, and took him into the ship. And there he went and he laid down in the ship. And other little ship followed him. Now, notice the storm only arose when Jesus went to sleep. Notice verse 37. It says, verse 37, it says, there arose a great storm wind, and the waves beat upon the ship, so that it was now full. Amen. But verse 38 says, Jesus was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on the pillar. Amen. Amen. No, a storm only arose up when Jesus laid down to sleep. The parallel, the parallel to this statement is this. When you start navigating your life outside the altar and the finish of faith, you can look for storms, amen, to suddenly strike against you, amen. When you decide I'm going to do it my way, amen, I don't need no help, I'm not going to, I'm not going to call on the Lord to help me, you can, you can rest assured, amen, uh, that the storm is going to roll, rise up, amen, against you, amen. So we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. In other words, we trust in the Lord every step of the way. Amen. No matter how hard the wind blew, amen, and the waves beat against the ship so that the ship was full of water, the Bible said Jesus laid fast asleep down in the hinder part of the ship. Amen. Amen. And what are you saying? Even though some storms have occurred in your life, Amen. He knows what you're going through. Amen. He was the one that said, let us go over to the other side. The storm that rose up was not, amen, something that Jesus did not know. Amen. It did not catch him off guard. He, the Bible says he, he laid down in the hinder part of the ship. He was fast asleep in the hinder part of the ship. Amen. Amen. Notice what it, in verse 38 says, Again, he said he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow, and they awakened him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Somebody must have told him, You better go take, let's go get Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Look, notice this fear can empower, overpower your emotions. Mm -hmm. Amen. It can cause even the wisest of men to forget all the educational training that they had. Fear can be such an overwhelming influence over your behavior where the smallest addiction can hold a person in bondage forever. Amen. Being fearful of your educational background can prevent you from pursuing a better job. You say to yourself, I don't, I don't have an education. Amen. I don't, I don't think I can fit into that particular job. I, I, don't, think, I, don't, I don't have the clothes to wear to a certain job. Amen. They make you fear from filling out the application, even trying to pursue a better job. Amen. Amen. No matter how hard the wind blows, let me say it again, no matter how hard the wind blows, no matter how hard the, 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 the storm wind blows against your life, no matter how hard life becomes in your life, amen, amen, Jesus knows, God knows, amen, that you are going through a terrible storm. He understand that. These men, watch this, these men were fishermen. They knew how to navigate their life. They knew how to navigate a ship 
through a storm. But this storm was demonic by nature. And its agenda was to prevent Jesus from crossing over to the other side. And when the disciples determined that the storm rage was too much for them to handle, somebody said, go and wake up Jesus and see if Jesus cared or know what's going on upstairs. Amen. Ask them, do you care that we perish? Sometimes when you first time, first sight of storm in your life, you need to go down to the knees and start praying to God. Amen. Amen. You see, whether Jesus cared or not, the question that we should be asking when you are fearful of outcome of a sudden storm, Lord, give me the boldness. Mm -hmm. Give me the strength to speak faith to my storm and occasion. Mm -hmm. You see, we, we shouldn't be fearful. This is a time that we should be go to the Lord in prayer. Mm -hmm. You see, living by faith and not by fear is standing on the word of God to help us overcome any threatening storm that comes in our life. Even when Satan, demonic forces occur in our life unexpectedly, we still do run to the Lord. And in fact, we're healed, amen, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. We got to know that he's always there. He promised never to leave us, and he promised never to ever forsake us. Amen. So, so Satan might be able to bring up storms in our life or bring people in our life or they can share uh, lies about you in your life, amen, and try to uh, he prevent you from going forward or being successful in your life. God knows all of that, amen. We got to trust him, amen. We got to lean not to our own understanding. We got to trust in the Lord all the time, amen. And, and God, will, God will raise you above the circumstances and the, and the storms that are, storm winds that are blowing against your life. Notice what, what happened. In verse 39, when, 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 when Jesus rose from his sleep, the Bible said, and he arose. You know, when he got up, he started doing some stuff. He rebuked the wind. Notice what he did. He said unto the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And that was a great storm. Amen? Notice this now. In Psalms chapter 8, verses 5 and 6. Amen. Because Jesus is Lord over all things. Let me say, for thou hast made him, talking about Jesus Christ, a little lower than the angel, and has crowned him with glory and honor. Amen. For thou hast been, thou makest him to have dominion, thou making him dominion over all things, over all the works of his hand, and have put all things under his feet. And when Jesus spoke to the wind and the sea, they had to obey because he had dominion over all things. Amen. Then Jesus turns, amen, to his disciples in verse 40. This is what we want to focus. And he asked them two questions. Why are you so fearful? And why you have no faith? Amen. And I want to ask you a question. Those of you us tonight, Amen. Why are you so fearful? And how is it that you have no faith? I know you're saying, I've got faith. I trust in the Lord. Okay, that's fine. But there may be somebody viewing us tonight, amen, are fearful about tomorrow. Amen. When they lay down, they can't sleep because they worry about what tomorrow amen. is going to bring. Amen. You probably have got a, 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 a disturbing report from the doctor. Amen. And the doctor said there's nothing else we can do. Maybe you have a loved one who's now in the hospital in ICU who's, who's suffering from this COVID virus. Amen. And, and the doctors have done all, all they can do. Amen. You're fearful about what, what can happen, what the next day is going to bring. Because none of us know what tomorrow is going to bring. But can I tell you who knows what tomorrow will bring? Because he holds tomorrow in his hand. He already knows. Why not cast it? Why not give it to him? Why not pray to him tonight and say, I'm, I'm, I'm turning my loved one over to you. I'm turning my children over to you. I'm, I'm putting them in your hands. And, and Lord God, I'm just trusting you to do. Yet your will be done in their life. And whatever the will of God would be in their life, you have to accept. Because God knows. Amen. He knows what to do. 
He knows more about what to do than we know. Amen. So he asked him to question. Amen. It's, it's like, to me, when I studied it, it's like Jesus could not understand why they could be fearful knowing he was no more. Amen. And the reason why they were so fearful of the raging storm is because fear caused them to panic and to forget whom they serve. Amen. That's what we said in the beginning. We said sometimes some storm can arose in your life suddenly. You can get some information, can hit you and make you sit right down. Especially when you get a phone call and say, tell you, say, are you sitting down? Amen. He said, I got some bad news to tell you that can make you sit down. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I can't forget uh, when I was, when my sister passed and, and I was out in the yard cutting grass and her husband called me, Eugene called me and says, I, 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 I got some bad news to tell you. And, you know, I was just thinking maybe a car wreck or something. I, I never in my wildest imagination was thinking that was my sister. He says, he says, and now I didn't wake up this morning. Right then I fell to the ground because it was something that I did not expect. I mean, I, I always expect that perhaps I would leave here before her because she seemed to more, be more healthier than I. Amen. But Lord knows he, he called her home first. But it knocked me completely off my feet. You know, it, it's, I remember that like it was yesterday. You can receive some news that can really knock you off your feet. These disciples could not handle this demonic storm that was causing them to panic and fear. Water was, the wind was blowing so terrible hard. Amen. And they were beating against the ship. But when Jesus rose up, he, he spoke peace. Mm -hmm. He caused the sea to come to a great calm. He told the wind to cease from its blowing. Amen. They saw what Jesus was doing. And he asked them, why are you so fearful? Why is it that you have no faith? Listen, I'm not telling you that 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 along, as long as Jesus is in your heart on board, that you won't go through no storm. I'm not telling you that. Amen. I'm not telling you that because in this world you're going to face all kind of tribulation. Amen. Jesus left that on record for us. I think it was in St. John 16, 32. He, he says something in that effect. In this world you're going to face all tribulation. Amen. He said, Behold, the hour come, yea, it's now come, that you shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with you. You're going to face some tribulation in this world. Amen. But he said, Be of good faith. Amen. Be of good cheer. He has overcome them all. Amen. Amen. God is working on your behalf even now. Even when the storm winds are blowing your life, he's working in your behalf. The second question that he asked him, uh, why is that you have no faith? Amen. In other words, how is it that you can see, see him, Jesus Christ, do wonders and miracles, and, and you and, and you not put into practice what you have seen Jesus do? Why you could not speak those things and be not as though they already are? Why? At this point, you allow the, the, the demonic forces, amen, to cause you to fear. And they ask them, where is your faith? And that's the whole premise of the demonic forces, is to get you to not look to God, to, to get you to panic and not trust him. Some have walked away from serving the Lord because of what people have said or the things that they have gotten themselves into. No matter what you have gotten yourself into, you can always go to him in prayer. You can ask him to forgive you for whatever it is that you have done. It might sound strange to a person who's so religious and so caught up that, that even a murderer can be forgiven. Amen. Paul was a murderer. Amen. David was a murderer. And he forgave them. Amen. He can forgive them. Amen. Well, do they pay for the sin? Yeah, they pay for the sins. But yet still, God can forgive you. Amen. 
the problem I, I believe that the disciples was facing, amen, I think we, we face the same problems, amen, as being Christians. We face those same problems. Well, we we trying to handle things that might be from a de, de, might be demonic, mm -hmm. amen, and we're trying to handle them from a fleshly perspective. That's when we need to turn it over to the Lord and allow the Lord to handle those things, amen. He gives us the He gives us the authority to thread to tread over the evil spirits. Mark sixteen. Did I give you Mark 16 and 17? He says, These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. And this is, this is Jesus that believes in Jesus. He said, That believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. Listen, they shall cast out devils. We don't practice that. Amen. We, 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 we medicate that. Amen. But there are some demonic forces moving, amen, have, have took up resident in people, amen, but we don't see them as being demonic. We, we look at it as some mental illness or something of that case. He says, in my name, they shall cast out devils. Watch this. And they shall speak with new tongues. That's not speaking in tongues. He said new tongues. The language that we spoke, amen, when we was in the world, we speak with a different tongue. Amen. amen. We speak those things that be not as though they already are. Amen. Because we have to trust in the Lord. Amen. Amen. We trust in him. And then finally, when storm wind, when the storm wind ceased, amen, and the sea stopped her rage, Amen. The Bible said in verse 41 that the fear of the disciple exceedingly gripped them. Amen. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this? That if even the wind and the sea obey him. Amen. Amen. I, now, 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 Brother Dick, I, I, don't, I don't know about you, but to me, it, it, it was kind of ironic they, they were fearful now. He walking on, he, in one occasion, he walked on water. Walked on the same water that would cause them Thomas, a terrible storm. Peter got out of the boat and asked Jesus, can I come? Bid me to come. And Jesus said, come. He stepped out of the boat, walked on the water toward Jesus, but he took his eyes off of Jesus, and the Bible says he began to sing. Amen. Amen. He was the same Lord Amen. The same Lord that, that said, give them something to eat. And said, we don't have anything. We only have so many pence. And he took two fishes and five bottles of them. Amen. And fed 5,000. Not even including the women. But here it is. They was exceedingly fearful. Amen. And said one to another, what man of man is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. Amen. In Luke's gospel, I think Luke chapter 11, amen, when Jesus backed up to the sea and was preaching, amen, and he had no more room, he asked, the, he asked the disciples, I think Peter was one of, on the boat, and he stepped at Peter's boat, amen, and he told Peter to go out a little farther from the, from the, from the shore, and he told him to cast his net on the, on the right side, and he pulled so many fish out. Amen. From, from, from that time, amen, and other little ships as well. Amen. And they kneel down and say, Lord, we're not even worthy. But here it is, they are fearful, exceedingly fearful, and says to themselves, what amount of man is this? Amen. Martha and Mary will tell you that our brother died, would have died if Jesus had not showed up. He waited another day and showed up. Amen. And told Martha and Mary that he was the resurrection of the life. Amen. He said, if any man believe on me, though he was dead, yet shall he live. And he raised his brother from the dead. Amen. What manner of man? They confused about who he is. Amen. He's, he's, he's Lord of Lord and he's King of King. Blind Bonamanus would tell you what manner of man Jesus is. He would tell you, he said, when he was he was blind, begging on the side of the road, he cried out to the son of David and asked him 
And Jesus asked him, what can I do for you? He said, I want my sight. And blind Bartimaeus tell you that he walked away sin. And Jesus told him, don't tell nobody. But the Bible says he, just, he went and, and told more about what Jesus had done. That's the kind of man Jesus is. Amen. Being with Jesus for three and a half years, should have they should have known what kind of man he was. He was a son of God. Amen. Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah sent to save humanity from their sin. What kind of man they shouldn't have known? He's more than just a man. Amen. He was 100% man and 100% God. Amen. What kind of man did Jesus want? Listen, even when I was lost, even when you was lost in your sin, amen, he snatched you out of darkness into your mother. He's more than just a man. Amen. He's the son of God. Amen. He, he's able to save humanity from their sins. And they asked him, they, they was fearful exceedingly. Amen. They were really afraid of this man that they called from the hinder part of the ship. And he rose from the ship and he began to, it began to rebuke the sea and the wind. Amen. And tell them to cease and everything turned calm. And they wondered, what kind of man is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. He has the, he has the authority over the elements. Amen. If he has, if, no, not the word, not yoke, it's not even part of it. He has, he has power over all elements. He can speak to your life today. If your life is in a stormy situation, call and cry out to the Lord, and he will call your stormy situation to cease. But you got to trust him. you got to believe that he can do just that. He has all power in his hand. Can I tell you this? And I close. When he rose from the dead, Amen. After spending three days, he rose from the dead. We, was preachers say early Sunday morning with all power in his hands. Listen, listen. He had all power in him, both in heaven and in earth. All power was given to him. So he's there, Amen. All we have to do, all you have to do, is listen. To, listen to me very carefully. Call out to him. Accept him as your savior. If you accept him as your Savior, he'll come into your heart. He'll suck with you, and you will be with him. He, his promises are there for you. He promised never to leave you, and he will not leave you. I know sometimes it feels as if you're all alone, but he won't leave you. He's right there with you. He won't forsake you. He won't forsake you. Sometimes I know there's a lot of things that have happened. People have actually died. Amen. Praying to the Lord to heal them. They have died. Died. He didn't, he didn't, he did not say that you was not going to die. Amen. So those who died didn't receive their healing now here. They received their healing up there in heaven. Amen. That's, we, we have entered into a win-win situation. My friends, the aim of this lesson today is to, to get the Christian church to live by faith and not by fear. We went through a pandemic. It, for rightfully so, we feared what the, pan, what the virus can do. We feared that. Now we're on the other side. Amen. People are more confident now. You can look and see it. Ball games, ball games, the, the stadium is full. And I know all of them ain't passing. The stadium is full. Amen. Even the ball players are hugging one another. They are doing, we are moved from this panic, uh, panic, having a panic attack, amen, panic situation, and now people are actually coming out. Amen. So, so if you are at home, you still, I, I see some of my church members, amen, they're posting all the things, doing everything in the restaurants, eating and doing everything. What, then why are you not in church? Amen. Why are you not worshiping God? Amen. So, so that's the problem I see today. That, that we weren't living in a time of being fearful. Yes, it's still, you, if you're not vaccinated, you need to be fearful. You need to be fearful. You need to be at home and not out of socializing and, and partying. Amen. Because you you can be affected somebody in your own home. Do you care whether or not you affect your family members? Do you care whether or not you will call somebody to have uh, the virus? Amen. You may be what they call this, uh, a 
asymptomatic. Amen. Not even know it. Might not have no, no, no symptoms. But you can be a carrier. Amen. Amen. So I pray that you understand. We have a responsibility to live by faith and not by fear. Amen. And if we do that, I, I grant you, we can get past a lot of stormy situations. We can overcome the circumstances that even the enemy goes on. There are some premeditated situations that we, we cause on our own. But even then, God will bring us to it. Amen? Amen. I, I thank you for tuning us in this morning. I mean, this afternoon, I don't know why we're doing with the morning. Amen. Thank you for tuning us in. Our lesson plan, we've been talking about living. Amen. And we have to know how to live. After you've given your life to Christ, you've got to live the life that are pleasing to God. I'm not talking about walking around like a zombie, amen, not enjoying life, but live the life that's pleasing to God. Watch what you say, watch your conversation, amen, watch who you're hanging around with so that your witness won't be tainted by your witness, the things that you do. Amen. Join us Sunday morning for another Sunday school lesson at 8 o'clock on, on the YouTube channel. Amen. Our deacon, Deacon Kevin Smith, who is our Sunday school superintendent, will bring another dynamic lesson. Amen. That's Sunday morning. Then at 9 30 in person Sunday school, right here at Washington Hill Baptist Church, 5611 of Shaw Drive, 37416. You can come at 9 30. Amen. Your input is welcome. Amen. Whatever question you want to bring. Amen. If we can't answer it there at Sunday school, we'll search the scripture and we'll bring you an answer. Amen. And then, and then immediately after uh, Sunday school, we go right into our morning worship at ten thirty. Amen. Amen. We pray that pray that what we have said tonight, or shared tonight, have been uplifted to you. I pray that you put into practice your faith and know that God loves you and He's there for you and He will never leave you. Father, we thank you again for bringing us through another Wednesday night study. We thank you those who tune in to Facebook and YouTube. We pray that all is well with them, that they know that the more trials they go through, the, the, their faith is strengthened through trials. Amen. That we have to read our word, read the word of God, and we continue to grow. And the more we grow, the more we know. And the more we know, it seems like the enemy will throw more at us. And, and when we continue to grow and build on our knowledge of Christ Jesus and what he would have for us to do, the enemy we get taken whooping from us. Because we just put the word of God on them. We pray for the sick and shut in all over the world. We lift up Sister Caroline Ball, Sister Carol and Sister Gwen Finley, others who are sick. We think about Sister Sister Riles and, and those are elderly members, Sister um, uh, Dorita Sanford. We pray for her. She's cared for those young boys. We pray to give her strength as well. We thank you for the this body of believers, this local family here at Washington Hill. We thank them for their support. We thank God for bringing us such a mighty long way. We thank you, Lord. We pray all our prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. 